It's, uh, this is a flying family. It is the way that this administration is trying to show that it will do whatever it can before it leaves office. How was your first flight, sir? Beautiful. Okay. Great plane. Air Force One, the most powerful plane in the world. Having to bear the pressure of not just flying one of the world's most politically influential men, but also keeping him safe and ensuring the man arrives anywhere on Earth in style. Anywhere the plane goes, the people there would almost immediately recognize his famous and unmistakable blue and white paint scheme. They would look up to it to hail the arrival of the President of the United States. It has been in the eyes of the public as more than just as far beyond first class cabin or its impressive technologically advanced defense countermeasure. It is perceived as a symbol of the American pride. It is treated and welcomed with every aspect of the word pride as would be defined by an American of their own. It has always been there with its four year lease owner through all of the historic moments that would gradually unfold this every representation of pride. To understand how Air Force One is seen by many as more than just a presidential plane, we've got to go back in time. Like, way back, no not that far back, to when there's no Air Force One in every sense of the word yet, to 1943. From here, we'll go in the history of timeline to see how Air Force One has proven itself the pride of America throughout its lifetime as time goes on. Oh, by the way, Air Force One is not a specific aircraft. But a call sign arrived under Eisenhower after a pretty cool incident when the presidential call sign is similar enough to another commercial airliner's call sign. So anyway, to 1943, after the successful Casablanca conference in which FDR became the first world leader to be transported by a plane, the Secret Service decided to devote and convert a plane exclusively for presidential travel, so that whenever FDR arrived, people would instantly recognize the plane even before they saw the man get off of it marking the distinctive presidential pride that no one else in the world owns. And also because it helps his paralyzed legs move around a lot easier. FDR's most remembered trip aboard Air Force One to the Yalta Conference is perceived by many historians as a game-changing element in World War II. It represents how each of us has our own, a factor where our pride foundation is built upon. For the president, whenever he's away from the main seat of power in DC, it's Air Force One acting as a flying White House wherever he's outside of the capital. Air Force One, however, is not fully utilized until Truman. It's like, once we realize our specialty, it takes time to actually embrace and enjoy it. Truman inherited Air Force One from his former boss. And unlike FDR, Truman loved to fly. He clocked up to 115,000 miles of flying during his seven-year presidency to places, and Air Force One truly represented presidential pride as mostly every presidential mission since then have been carried out on board a certain designated presidential aircraft. Under Eisenhower, Air Force One acted as part of a showing off and keeping up game. Four different types of planes were assigned presidential missions during his eight year tenure alone. And each one newer, more technologically advanced than his predecessor. There was a reason for Eisenhower to apply his plane knowledge to the limit. The United States and the Soviets were actively jockeying for dominant world power into what is known as the Cold War. And during his presidency, the war hit one of its peaks. Just imagine, you as an American would define what makes you proud, and one day, the moment you realize it's so much more useful to take down your opponent and intimidate them with our specialty. Yes, the plane was seen by Eisenhower as a powerful politically negotiating tool, flexing with the USSR and other world leaders to term phrase American exceptionalism. After the Soviet had already sent their delegate overseas in turbofan driven planes, was Eisenhower's then Air Force One, the VC 121A Columbine II, was still propeller driven. Eisenhower brought Air Force One to the jet age with the new VC 121B order. By the time the 35th President of the United States took office, most presidential flights were carried out aboard the VC 121B jets. The Kennedy wanted a new paint scheme for their currently old orange military colored jets, one that would represent their administration, and above all, American freedom and pride. So the new plane arrived at Andrews Air Force Base in his new clothes, the elegant blue and white color paint job that remained to these days. Like the way every American adores their own prides and makes it distinct, the one and only kind of thing. JFK loved the new jet, and it carried him all the way until his death. 
on November 21st, 1963, a series of events drew the eyes of the whole world towards Air Force One. Even when in the coffin, Kennedy's body was to be flown back to DC on Air Force One, not by any other plane, by Air Force One. Lyndon B. Johnson was sworn in right on board Air Force One, and suddenly Air Force One became such a solemn place as it hosted the event of LBJ being the first president to be in office while outside of DC. Such pride and privileges really put Air Force One in a special place. It is now a place that Americans also look up to their new president, mourn for their old one, the future of America, and the American pride turned to a new page on board Air Force One. Similar things happened to Nixon. During his last hours in office, his president title was taken away from him when he was 35,000 feet above Missouri. At that time, Gerald R. Ford was sworn in, in the eyes of the Hall of America once again, aimed towards Air Force One, reminiscing the end of a presidency and the beginning of a new one. Until now, it is pretty clear that every president's policies can be different. But in a way, they all changed Air Force One to reflect their administration, to make the president feel the plane is his own, his home, his pride whenever he boards. Jimmy Carter replaced a newly installed conference room for the old presidential stateroom dated back to Nixon during the economic malaise. Ronald Reagan brought back the presidential stateroom, among other amenities removed from the Carter era. George H.W. Bush flew the plane to many parts of the world established relations with many new countries, bringing along the mightiness of Americans with him every time the world watches him disembark from Air Force One. Bill Clinton with a newly refurbished Grand Conference Room and a new TV installed. George W. Bush installed Wi-Fi on the plane and made every TV live stream able after he wasn't able to talk live to the Pentagon during the 9-11 emergency. Obama wanted every jacket on the plane to bear his name on the person's right chest and their designated jacket name on the hard side of the chest. Donald Trump has already ordered new Air Force One, a pair of Boeing 747-8i. Every president, some changes, one long-standing symbol. And you might be asking, as an exchange student from Vietnam, who am I to talk about Air Force One being the American symbol of democracy? Well, here's one minute crash course. I've loved airplanes since I was three, and I really mean love. I used to love trains, cars, beautiful girls, a bunch more stuffs, but they come and go. What have not gone and will never go is my love for airplane. So I started paying attention to Air Force One when I heard Obama was flying to Saigon. So I came on top of a building near the airport for literally 12 hours and came up there to hunt down the American flagship. The atmosphere up there that day was amazing. Press, journalists, other plane lovers, People everywhere. What surprised me though, is the people's reaction when Air Force One came into view. Just take a look at this video recorded by myself that very same day. And judge for yourself how significant Air Force One is in modern history. And why I decided to make this video in the first place. In the end, all the way until now, times through times, presidencies after presidencies, Air Force One has proven itself to be more than just a plane. It not only carries the seal of the President of the United States overseas, but also the whole country as well, representing what it means to be an American, owning that American pride, and to signal to the whole world wherever the plane flies to, that the representative of the proudest country in the world has arrived.